Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining me on this video. If you are already familiar with FileMaker 19 or above and its ability to work with JavaScript-based add-ons like the Kanban board, then you might like this particular video. I'm going to show you how to extend functionality on how to create a new card for the Kanban as well as the ability to delete a card. Neither of these features are built in with the add-on when you first install it and others have asked us exactly how this can be accomplished. So it's a series of steps to do that. They're not particularly difficult, but unless you've never done it before, it may seem like an uphill battle, especially if you're new to Claris FileMaker. So stay tuned while we talk about how to add and delete Kanban cards from the FileMaker Kanban add-on. So to get started, let's create a brand new FileMaker file. I'll open up the FileMaker Pro application and create a new one here. I'll create a blank file and I'll put that file on the desktop. I'll call it Kanban Test. All right, we can skip adding any kind of fields at the moment. And let's make this window a little wider so we can see what's going on here. All right, then I'll go into layout mode, which I'm using Command L for layout. And then you wanna make sure that your pane here for objects, your objects pane on the left is showing. So to do that, you'll be clicking this button at the top right to make sure that that appears. And then once you're there, you wanna make sure you click add-ons. From there, you'll click on the plus sign at the bottom left, and that will bring you to a screen where you can add add-ons. In this case, we want the Kanban, so I'll do that now. And at this point, we have just added the add-on to our file and you can see evidence of that here in the script workspace all of these scripts have been added all right now we just need to add the add-on to the layout in order to start using it and seeing it so i'll do that right here into the body part you'll note that when you originally go to put this on the layout it may not fit top to bottom but as you let go it will position itself and readjust accordingly so that the body should adjust to encapsulate the whole web viewer here for the add-on but you may not see that happen going left to right. So you might need to drag your layout uh, separator here so that it goes beyond the actual web viewer. I'll go back to browse mode using command B. And here, just like that, we have our add-on. Now this add-on comes complete with a lot of functionality. It gives us some sample data to work with. I'm able to drag cards around. I'm also able to edit the cards by clicking on them and then changing whatever I want in here. And then the changes will be appropriately displayed. But there is no built-in way as of right now to add a new card or to delete a card. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to put a button here at the top allowing us to add a card and then we can see how that's done. So let's do that right now. We'll first add a card. I'll go into layout mode and we're going to put a button here. So first we need a script. So I'll go into script workspace here and I'm using the command shift S to get into script workspace. And then from here, I'll create a new script and I'll simply call it new card. Now what we'd like to do is bring up that window, that edit screen, then we wanna create a new record and get us in a position where we can add a new card and allow the user to enter data. So I will do that new window is the first command here, the first script step we'll use. And then I'll adjust that so that it is a card type window, which would mimic what we've already seen when we edit a card, it goes into a card window. So we'll do the same when we create a new card. The window name I'll leave blank. I'll put the layout though the same layout that we use for the sample data, the one that we're using now, I happen to know it's called Kanban sample data. If you didn't know that ahead of time, you could kind of preview the layouts one by one and see which one represents that data entry screen. I'll leave all the other settings their default value. So now I've got a new window. Now this particular window may not be sized appropriately. So the next command I'll use is adjust window. And then I'll select resize to fit. Then we actually have to create a new record, so I'll do that, new record. And that should be it. We'll have a blank record, I'll be able to fill in the information. So long as I fill it in correctly and push the close button, we'll have a new record displaying within the Kanban 
clipboard. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I'll use this button tool to make a plus icon. So I'll use the icon only and choose the plus. I'll make the pixels a little bigger. Let's say, well, let's say 25 points so we can see it better. And then I'll have that button perform a script here. And I'll filter it for the word card. There's the new card script. I'll push OK. Close that and go back to browse mode using Command B. And I've got a button now. So when I click this button, it should bring up a card window, empty, and we assume it's a new record because we told the script to do that. And I'll call this test card one. And we'll need to give it a status for it to show up. So I'll choose in progress so that it shows up here in the middle lane. I'll go ahead and give it a date and we can assign it to somebody on the list and I'll make it green. When I close this now, the card appears within the Kanban board. So now we've learned how to make a card. Simple script just required three steps, a new card, directing it to the right layout, adjusting it so that resizes to fit, and then a new record to actually give us a place to put the new data. So how would we delete a card? Now, we can't necessarily put a delete trash can or something here at the top because we won't know which one to delete. The plus, we can get away with that because it'll create a new record and it'll be up to the user to fill in the information to determine which card and where it goes. But for deleting a card, I think the best place to put that would be on the card itself. So why not add a trash can icon here, right here on the card? So let's go do that. In order to do that a little easier, you want to go to layout mode and go to the Kanban sample data layout, which is the same layout that represents the data entry screen. And we know we're going to need a script. So let's go add a new script here and I'll put it right next to the new card script. So I'll click plus here and we'll call this delete card. Okay, so I think the thing we'll need to do is obviously we'll need to delete the record. So we'll delete record like that. And we'll leave the dialog box on to give the user the opportunity to cancel. But then we'll need to close the card window. So then we will call the close window script step. So if we just close the window, the problem with that is it won't refresh the web viewer. It won't force that refresh. So we need to do that as well. So to do that, we will perform a script that already exists in the system. It came complete with your add-on. It's called Refresh Kanban, I believe it is. In fact, if I put the word refresh here, you'll see, yeah, Kanban Refresh is the official name. That's the script we want to trigger. So on our delete card, I'll go back here to delete to my script. And we will perform a script like this. And we'll direct that to perform the script called Refresh. Notice I'm filtering that here to make it quicker and easier for me to find. There we go. And now we should have everything we need. So we've got our delete script created. Let's just simply create a button now to trigger it. I'll put the button down here. We'll use an icon only. We'll grab a trash can. We'll make it 25 points, just like the other icon for the plus. And we will assign that to our new script, which we know is called delete card. And that should be it. Oh, we can turn the trash can red. And I'll select the button icon. And then we'll turn that some form of a red. Perfect. I'll go back to browse mode here. And now, uh, I don't want to trigger that now because it's out of context. Let's go back here to the dashboard. And let's say I want to delete that test card now. I can click on the test card. It brings it up. I'll delete it with the trash can. Do I want to permanently delete the record? Yes, I'll delete that. And just like that, the card has disappeared. Let's add a new card. Test two. This time we'll put it in a different lane. Let's put it in the uh, lane, the done lane. And we'll make it purple so we can find it. Okay, there it is sneaking here at the bottom. If I want to go and delete that now, I just delete that and it refreshes and we have deleted the card just as easily as we added the card. So this is a great way to extend functionality of an add-on. 
these were pretty straightforward and pretty simple, but if you're not intimately familiar with add-ons or FileMaker, doing this for the first time may be difficult and it may depend on exactly what you're trying to do. The, you know, the script will change based on how you're trying to do something. Keep in mind too that something you might see as being quite simple in theory may end up being quite difficult in practice because the add-ons are in fact JavaScript based. So that means in, by their very nature, you know, the underpinnings are, are using a language that's fairly complex and fairly robust. So if you're not intimate with JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and the like, then doing something what may seem simple could actually be very difficult and pretty advanced. But for some of the basics, like records, adding a record, deleting a record, luckily, most of these add-ons work directly with the records in FileMaker. So it's just a matter of knowing how to trigger those records, how to delete them, how to add them. And then the real key is to refresh whatever add-on you're doing, like you just saw me do, that will get you 90% of the way there when it comes to management of records. If you want to do something more advanced, like change the, the way the behavior, the overall behavior of this Kanban board beyond what it can already do here in the configuration, which there's quite a few options here. There's settings and different things you do. You have some choices. You certainly have choices over what fields you're looking at. But other things like, for instance, what if you want the border of the Kanban thicker? Or what if you want a semi-transparent card based on a condition? All of those things are more like advanced options. And in order to change that, you're going to need to get under the hood in a serious way, meaning you may need to manipulate JavaScript, the CSS, or the HTML, or a combination of that in order to pull off that kind of functionality. And that's really an advanced thing. But for the most part, if you can live within the concept of how this was originally created and within the way that it works... Um, assuming you're not really familiar with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS in a meaningful way, uh, then you'll probably have most of your needs met. Anyway, this gets the juices started for what you could possibly do from here. Let me give you one more example before I let you go on how you can add a new card but have it be a little smarter than just a generic card. So we already created a script that when you create a new card here, it's completely blank and then you fill it out. Well, what if you wanted to have a plus sign specific to when something is a to-do and you want it to pre-fill in that to-do information? So let's go do that now. I'll go to layout mode and I'll duplicate this existing button since it does already a lot of what we want and it looks the way we want it to look. I'll hold the option key and drag this out and that will duplicate the object and make a new button. But I want to adjust that original script that we had which was for the new card. So let's go find that now. Here's the new card script we created. So in order for it to be a little smarter, maybe we could have that button send a script parameter that predefines the type to do. What do I mean by that? I mean this. I'll say set field so that when this new record is created, we take one extra step here and we set the field called status and we're going to set that with a given parameter that the button sent it so we'll get the script parameter let me do it this way there we go and that will put in whatever information we assign to that button it'll put it into the status field just like that so it's really one script step on all it does is get the script parameter and puts it into the field when the new record is added now it's simple. You just go to that button and you give it a script parameter of whatever text you want to be filled in. In this case, I want it to be to do like that. Okay. So now when I click this second button that we created, it should automatically fill it with to do. And it did. So now I'll say uh, my to do. And we will assign it and give it a white background and sure enough there's my to do so that saved the user one step and it sort of indicates that this button is automatically going to make a to do versus a generic card it's just one example of how you can continue to extend the functionality based on your knowledge and skill within filemaker so the sky's the limit as far as how you can go it's really a matter of skill set and desire and time 
But those are some basic examples if you're all brand new to this and you're working with add-ons for the first time. They can be a little confusing at first on how they behave because it's something new that us developers are really seeing, in a sense, for the first time. But once you get the hang of it and understand that a lot of these add-ons have a unique ID, known as a UUID, and that they need to be refreshed, and a lot of times you need the UUID in order to refresh it, um, once you get that concept down, then working with these add-ons becomes a little bit more straightforward. Hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to subscribe and like it, and we will catch you on the next one.